Hello everyone, I am Lady Morgana and welcome to my channel. This video will only contain two health topics. I know I said I was going to add a beauty and fashion topic, but I changed my mind. So, let's get started. I want to say this, I may not be a perfect 10, no one really is but I try to keep healthy, which is why I wrote this topic. Let's talk about being obese. The issue that always weighs on us after the holidays or before summer. Being overweight may be, be accepted nowadays, but it is still unhealthy. If you're obese, it is especially unhealthy. I don't care if people say, being fat is more acceptable nowadays and no one really cares what you look like, however, it is not that accepted as one thinks. If it was so accepted, my cousin would not have gone out of her way and got on a diet. I've seen a recent picture of her, and it looks like she has lost some weight, also her hair is shorter but that's not important. As I stated in the past, it's not about the hair, it's about the body. Apparently, my cousin took it to heart. Anyways, body weight does matter. Your body is your temple, it is where your soul resides, and taking care of it will extend your life in later years. Every diet gives different results. Whatever diet you are on, exercise is first and foremost important for your body. The old saying is, move more and eat less, applies. Eating less doesn't mean not eating. It means eating less of those Debbie donuts, etc. Quick fixes. Quick fixes are just that, quick fixes and eventually, you'll end up putting the weight back on. Some people say if you lose weight slowly, the weight will stay off, well. For some people that's true but not for everyone. I've known women who have done the slow weight loose plan and for some reason they ended up putting it back on. The way to lose weight and maintain is by following the diet you are on, always. I praise the Mediterranean diet but if you slip from it just a bit, you'll put on weight again. Exercise, will help with maintaining weight, any kind of exercise. Walking, jogging, biking, hiking, whatever you like to do. It's important. I walk five days a week, doing at least two to three miles. When it rains outside, I use an exercise bike and do my time on it. I make it a point to go for a hike once or twice out of the week if time or weather permits. As you age it gets harder. Yes, as you age it gets harder to lose weight. If you're in your mid-30s and over 40, losing weight takes longer. But don't fret, if you are determined, you will see results. How to prevent having to deal with obesity. Watch your weight. Especially during pregnancy. That is the time when you can overestimate the weight you're supposed to gain during pregnancy. I've seen it happen to other women. There was a woman that I knew, her name was Mercy, who never experienced morning sickness during her pregnancy and consumed foods that went straight to her belly and thighs. She was pregnant around the same time I was pregnant. I did experience morning sickness, and couldn't eat everything I saw, but when I got over my morning sickness, I followed the diet my doctor prescribed to me and thus, lost weight. She did not. Through the last two pregnancies, I did the same. Each pregnancy is different, and I will explain that in a future topic. Dieting is only part of it, exercising even when it is raining outside, matters. If you have a membership to the gym, go for it. If you have your own exercise equipment, do it. When it is raining, I use my exercise bike, 30 minutes tops. Morning and evening. In conclusion, you know you have to lose weight. Regardless, whether your husband says you look good or not. You know deep down inside that it's important, for you and for your, self-esteem. Know this, your hair may be beautiful, but your body is more important. Experiencing Pregnancy Issues now, what I'm referring to as issues, is morning sickness and what comes with it. Let's start with women who experience excessive saliva during pregnancy. Saliva buildup in the mouth early in pregnancy, sometimes called tinylism gravidarum, is one of those rare pregnancy symptoms that some women experience, though it's relatively rare and most often reported by women who have morning sickness, it is most uncomfortable and embarrassing. As quoted, Tinylism is a condition where you make too much saliva. People with tinylism might produce 1 to 2 liters of saliva daily. 
Tylenolism is also known as hypersalivation or silaria. It often affects women in the early stages of pregnancy. This condition won't harm your baby and is not serious, but that doesn't mean you can't find it upsetting and uncomfortable. Oh, uncomfortable. That's an understatement. My first pregnancy was hard on me. I had severe morning sickness, and nothing would stay down. Aside from the morning sickness, which I experienced close to eight months, came excessive saliva. When I was pregnant with my first kid, I was still working at the time and people around me do not understand what I was going through. They just thought I was disgusting for spitting into Kleenex tissues and carrying around a plastic cup to spit in. If I tried to swallow my spit, I would vomit. It was that bad. The people I worked with, knew I was pregnant but because tylism is rare, they were closed-minded about my dilemma and frankly, most just didn't want to understand. All I wanted to do is keep away from everyone, so I asked to go on light duty, keeping myself away from my co-workers who did not want to be around me. These were people that two years before I came out pregnant, were the nicest people, the most easy to get along with people I'd want around me. It was too bad they did a 360. As if I had something contagious, right? Wow, some people. It was embarrassing for me to be experiencing tylism because they were not very sympathetic and they taunted me about what I was going through long after I had my son. Anyways, I didn't start showing until my seventh month, which is basically when the excessive saliva started to subside. I stayed subside, because I still experienced morning sickness until a few weeks before I would give birth. Unfortunately, I had to go back to work three months after I had my son, which is perfectly normal. Now, with my second son, I experienced morning sickness the first three months, but the excessive saliva was not as prominent as it was with my firstborn. By the time I was pregnant with my third son, I never experienced morning sickness nor tylism. While there is no medical treatment for tylism, you may be able to ease symptoms by doing these four steps. 1. Eating smaller but more frequent meals. 2. Brushing your teeth and using mouthwash several times a day. 3. Chewing sugarless gum or sucking hard sweets taking frequent, small sips of water. 4. Putting ice in your mouth. Personally, for me this was misleading. I tried number 1 and no, it didn't work, then I tried number 2, it didn't work either. I tried number 3, it just made me want to throw up. I never heard about putting ice in your mouth, so maybe that would have worked but at the time, it seemed as though no one knew anything about tylism and could give me good advice. So, I suffered in silence. I wish we had the internet back then, where all you had to do is look for the information online and show others that this is what you were experiencing, however, people are people and ignorant people and don't want to understand another person's dilemma. In conclusion, if you're experiencing tylism, don't feel bad. Many women out there have experienced the same condition during pregnancy. Think of the little bundle of joy that will come into your life and the symptoms seem diminutive compared to the change your life will go through. A whole new chapter in your life will begin. Trust me on that. In the coming weeks, I will be making one topic vlogs. Unlike the standard videos I make which usually consist of two or three topics, throughout this summer, I will make one topic videos. Thanks for watching this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Stay safe and be blessed.